Welcome back guys to the awesome and completely unpredictable but sometimes predictable channel of Welker Farms Incorporated where we do things like farming, lots of farming, and today got all these GoPros lined up here and this one is going to see the insides of beast buying. Unfortunately for its fate, I'm surprised I'm even doing this because I'm pretty sure it's going to end up at the rock trap in about 200 pieces, but I'm going to do some things to hopefully prevent that. But a while back, literally a while back, like a year ago, I was instructed by you guys that I needed to run a GoPro through a combine. You guys paid for one through donations. So I'm going to honor that decision, honor your guys' uh, donations. It's a year late, I'm sorry, but it's happening now. This GoPro Hero 3 Silver, in its case, is going to go through Beast Bind. We'll try it a couple different times if it makes it through in pieces. If it doesn't come through the first time it's shattered and gone, well, then I guess that's our conclusion. But my goal with this today is I want this camera to go through the back of the combine. I want it to go through the feeder house, around the rock beater, into the cone, into the rotor, up the concaves, out the back of the straw chopper. Hopefully it's not gonna get destroyed there. It's chances are slim, guys, just so you know. And then onto the sieve, and then hopefully out the back. I'm gonna have the spreaders in the back lifted up so it falls on the ground. And I'll have all the doors on the clean grain elevator as well as the rethrasher open, so hopefully it falls down on the ground there too. It might be a little bit of a struggle to find this camera, but we'll try it. We'll see what happens. I've done some work in here. I've taped with electrical tape around and around and around to hold the SD card in nice and tight. I've got this case with some uh, cardboard in the back here to hold the battery in nice and tight. So hopefully if it gets jarred real hard, it doesn't stop recording. But I guess let's fire Beast Bind up here. It hasn't started in a, about a month. Let's fire him up. Let's drive it over to the concrete and get it ready. Let's go. Battery cutoff's gotta be on. Otherwise there'll be no juice to start this thing. It's been a while since I've been in here. Let's go inside. Well. We'll see what happens. I'm pretty sure guys, this camera's toast before it even has a chance of getting through that combine. But you know what? Only time can tell. Let's fire her up. I had to pull that down when we're gonna engage the separator. It won't run without it. So gotta open the top up. Easy to do though. It's all automated, really simple. And then so I can back the combine up on the concrete without running the auger into the building, I always swing her unloading auger out before backing up. That baby's 28 feet long. Yeah, that'll run into the building. Don't wanna do that. So to maximize light, so we can see inside there, if it makes it into the rotor, I'm gonna open all the covers up on this thing, take everything off to get all the light in as much as possible. So hopefully the camera can pick up something so it's not just a boring black screen the whole time. But it can't be that hard. And I wanna open this one up because there's a good chance it could come out here. Pieces of it at least. We'll find out. After looking closer at that, some of that stuff needs cleaned out a little better. I thought we uh, did a good job uh, cleaning this combine out, but some of that must have settled down the system, rattling with the wind blowing and little kernels falling down from spots that we weren't able to blow out. So this will be a good time to kind of clean this combine up a little bit more. Now I'm gonna want that up because I really don't want the camera to fall down on the spreaders. But if you guys look in here carefully, that's a straw chopper up there. That thing has got blades all around it. It's gonna be whipping. I'm not gonna run this combine at full speed. I'm thinking about just idling it. If it makes it through one pass, then I'll whip it up to full power. We'll see what happens, wide open. But let's give this camera a chance at least. Maybe we can get it through the machine, that'd be cool. A little more light. Only problem is this is an LED, which means if I put it in slow motion, you might get some flickering in the video, but just, uh, just know that, that the light and flickering is better than dark and no flickering, so we'll just uh, deal with the LED. Now I'm thinking I'm gonna run the concaves out pretty far. I don't wanna create a ledge right here. Um, if the concaves are out all the way, it might create kind of a, a ledge on the back of the modules here where it has to kind of bump up to go up out of the, the rotor. So I'm hoping with if I can get the concaves level with this one, that it'll be a smooth shot all the way out if it makes it that far. But my next step is I think over here, the infamous rock beater that I told you guys about, the unit that's gonna probably be the demise of this camera is right up here. I don't know if you guys can see it right there, but that purpose is basically the crop floats underneath it. It just lightly taps it, doesn't really, doesn't really do much to the crop at all. It just barely is there, but anything solid that comes through with the product coming in the combine, the bars hit that. Is that cylinder spinning? It's more of like a spiral triangle and it's rotating and one of the edges will hit something hard and it knocks the rock down hard into what's called the rock trap, which is this right here. And with that, I'm allowed to open up during the day and dump the rocks on the ground that hopefully don't make it through the combine. The rock trap honestly probably collects, I'd say 95 to 98% of any large mass that goes through here that's not soft. 
well, the camera is not soft. So, but what I'm thinking, I've been thinking about this for a while, is I think I'm gonna take a piece of cardboard because it's gonna fall in this trap. It's just gonna end up here regardless, guys. We can try it once, but I know it's gonna end up here. But let's try, I'm gonna put a piece of cardboard and make an artificial floor across there. So that way it'll hopefully slide across the cardboard if it doesn't get smacked by that and it'll get kicked into the cone, which is then in the rotor, which then goes way out the back. So let's get a piece of cardboard. Let's try to maneuver it up in there and uh, see if uh, it can get through there. This part will be pretty easy. This is your feeder chain in your feeder house. It's just a chain with a bunch of bars on it. And all it does is it just kind of floats across the floor and drags anything up. Take this camera, I'll probably have to take it and slide it up in there enough so that it doesn't get missed by this because, well, it's a, uh, it's raised up a little bit, but guys, I haven't done this very often. It's the first time putting a camera through a combine, so your guess is as good as mine. I've got some faith in it though. I think it'll be okay. Okay, so I got a piece of cardboard stretched across the back of the feeder house into the cone, the rotor cone, right underneath the rock beater. And I've got a piece of twine here to kind of hold the cardboard down so it stays in place. I don't think it's gonna move. I don't think it's gonna hit it. The feeder chain, is if it bumps, it's just gonna right over the top of it. So hopefully that's enough of a bridge so we can avoid going into the rock trap if it makes it through the rock beater. Well, I guess the next step now is lower the concaves down, set some cameras up, maybe get some more lights in there if I can. Let's do this. I think the moment's finally come, guys. It took me a while. Got all the covers off, got the cardboard over underneath the rock beater. So hopefully it's a bridge across that gap there. I got a light in there with the camera point at the rock beater, as well as the inside of the concave right here. Got a camera facing the front of the feeder house. Here's our mighty GoPro waiting to go inside. Obviously I'm loading augers out so it doesn't hit the building. This side's all open so a little more light gets inside the rotor area. In here, I've got an LED point in the back, as well as a camera up top there to hopefully catch any fragments that might be coming out the back. Oh, one more thing. How about, I was thinking, just, just for the sake of maybe trying to give this thing a little bit more of a chance, what if I wrap this thing in duct tape? I think that'd help a little bit just maybe keep the pieces together a little more so they don't shatter everywhere. I'm thinking that might be a good idea. Let's go do that real quick. Okay, well, I have the camera right here. It's uh, wrapped in a bunch of duct tape. I have just enough spots so that the lens is exposed as well as the buttons to turn it on and off. This has been a good camera. I don't know if I wanna do this to it. Okay, well, I think the next step now is, um, let's turn all the cameras on. I almost forgot to lower the concaves, but they're dropped now. That's even. Let's fire this thing up. Cameras. Okay, I'm gonna start from the front, work myself to the back and turn everything on. Okay, I'm hitting record. It is officially recording. Let's take the camera, put it inside here. I'm gonna put it in facing inside. Let's go like that. All right, well, <laughs> let's fire her up. Oh boy. All right, you guys ready? I didn't slow the rotor down, but I'm just gonna idle it. I'm not gonna put anything in full throttle. I'll start the rotor first and the separator, and then I'll start the feeder house, and that's what's gonna pull it in the, the combine. Let's go. First up, separator. Okay, our rotor's at 440 RPM, fan's at 630. All right, ready for this? Here goes, feeder house. I heard something. Oh yeah, it definitely went somewhere. There was a clunk, clunk, clunk. I'll let it run a little bit just in case it's making its way out the back. All right, let's shut it off. Let's go take a look. See what the damage is, see if we can find the camera. <laughs> I think I found it, guys. Let's turn the, cam the combine off so you can hear me. A little noisy back there. Well, that's piece of it. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find this SD card. I hope it's out there somewhere. I can tell you this, the camera is officially not recording anymore. There's the Hero 3 faceplate. Oh, I was hoping this thing would make it through. It shredded the tape right off of it. There's the camera right there. That's why I put this on the concrete was so I could hopefully find the SD card if it survives. Oh, this is gonna be fun looking for this. There's the case. Here is some of the internal. Looks like uh, maybe where the battery housing went. It shot this stuff way out here. Well, let's just keep looking, see if I can find it. I was just like, oh, we're right here. There's a piece, looks like the front of the lens cover. Oh, there's a there's a button right there. Looks like the power button, the mode button on the front. There's the, <laughs> oh no, look at that. It's a little scan code you can do for taking a picture and scanning the camera. Okay, got that. I don't see an SD card anywhere. I might have to go grab my other GoPro and take a closer look at what, oh, what's this? That's a piece of it. What's this one right here? Okay, that's, the, that's like the camera lens. 
housing. Oh, we got some pieces in here. It did get shredded before it uh, before it went to the back. Makes sense. Bits and pieces of the plastic housing here. Actually, this might be the lens. I see there's some on the other side too. Oh, what's that right there? Oh, that's the battery. Okay, well, it didn't start on fire. Okay, well, let's just keep looking here. So I went ahead and went back into my little uh, camera room here. Let's take a look at my other GoPro 3, and let's just confirm where that SD card goes. Oh, it's in the side of the housing right there. That's right, right there. Okay, I should have, <laughs> well, I don't want to glue it in there. So I need to look for that end like that. Well, here's the cover with the old one. Let's just, uh, let's just go keep going at this, see if we can find this thing because this is gonna be some of the best footage ever taken ever on this farm. So looking at this closer, the SD card would have gone on this side right here. And I'm looking through my uh, inventory so far of odds and ends, and I just don't see anything that resembles that SD card. It really smoked this thing, wow. There was not a lick of hope for that. Okay, well, let's keep going. It's gotta be near summer. I'm taking the light with me this time. Almost should have swept this off better. A bunch of this old grain fell out. Okay, well, let's climb inside and see if we can take a better look in here. Oh, there's something right there. Oh, 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 guys, 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 right there. Here it is. Oh, it's intact too. No way, it's a, it's a sand disky stream. And that baby survived. It did it. It actually made it through. It didn't go out the back of the combine. That micro SD has a couple dings in it. I think that thing is gonna work. Wow. I had that inside its protective case. I taped the camera with about five loops of electrical tape with a piece of metal stuck to the side to hold the micro SD in. Then I put the case around it. And then I duct taped the case like you guys saw. And it separated the micro SD from the camera. I didn't know B Spine could separate micro SDs from the. I guess it's called a threshing machine. Thresh that SD card right out. I did not plant that, if you guys were wondering. I literally just saw that. Okay, well, let's just find a couple more pieces and then um, let's go plug this to the computer and then watch the video. Well, I'm just taking out all the batteries and micro SDs from all the other cameras right now. I also got to charge some batteries because Leg Arms is just about to take off on his trip and he's going to take a camera with him for his uh, little adventure he's going on. And by the way, guys, Leg Arms is not looking for another job. It's all an inside joke. He's just actually going to go visit someone. You guys are going to see soon. It should be a fun collaboration, a little YouTuber get together. Only this time, it's more of leg arm style, so stay tuned for that. But let's take all these SD cards out. This is what I do after every day of filming. Open my little case here, start sticking them inside in the order that I took them out of the camera. Then we'll go pull the memory off all these things and we will find out exactly what happened inside that combine. This is leg arm's camera, by the way, guys. He did some mods to it himself, actually. Kind of improved upon what I already did, but still looks really good, so he'll be taking that with him. I'm actually really excited to try the eight out. The Hero 8. I want to give that a shot. So far, I'm pretty excited for that camera. All right, I'm in the shop office. I brought all the parts in. Here they are. Uh, I, I just, I'm in awe. I, I'm in absolute awe. What happened here, and that SD card was recovered, and it's not damaged. Take a close look at this, guys. Just look at, look at the devastation that took place here. On the left here, we've got the housing, which is obviously still has some duct tape wrapped around it. That took a major beating. There's a bunch of the latch mechanism, as well as the back cover. Here is the battery. It has uh, seen better days, but it is actually split in two. Nothing's leaking out of it. It seems like it's safe and intact. Yeah, that's the one part that could be sketchy about doing this whole thing, but it's fine. Over here, we've got the microchip. That's the microprocessor right there. Some ribbon cables, the lens, the lens cover as well as looks like where some electronics plug in together. There's the GoPro housing, there's the front face plate, the power button. This is my black, my Hero 3 black that I have that I didn't go through the camera. That is what it should look like. They look identical. Here's the battery. So this is the exact same battery, only in one piece. You can see they've got two different cells on there, split apart, and here, this, that is the housing, exact replica of the one that went through, went through the combine. Wow, unreal. And right here, there is the mighty Sandisk Extreme that survived that thing. That is amazing, absolutely amazing. Little rough edges on one side on the back side, but overall looks pretty good. Let's flip it over real quick. There's the back side of it. It looks good. I think guys, we're gonna pull a memory off that. This has been a success. Unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. Well guys, this is unreal. I'm blown away. I'm absolutely blown away that I found as many pieces as I did. I thought with all the tape and this housing, 
pretty tough housing. I've, I put these things for a lot. I thought for sure that it would stay together a little better than it did. I mean, it, it absolutely dismembered that camera. I'm gonna send these pieces in to GoPro because they said that if you send in a camera that was purchased over $100 and it doesn't matter if it's broken, they will accept it in honor and, and take off $100 off the GoPro Hero 8. So GoPro, let's see if this fits your criteria and if you'll honor this. According to what I read, you will, but here's your chance. I did not get paid to do this, guys. Believe me, I did not get paid to do this, but I have given GoPro a lot of money over the years, as you can see. This camera is just, it's unreal. But I'm gonna send GoPro this stuff, and GoPro, I really hope that you take $100 off a camera when I go and purchase the GoPro 8, because this is a good chance for me to test out the 8 and get 100 bucks off the price. So, instead of this one going to you guys, you're getting these. All right, let's go take this footage. Ready to watch it? I'm excited. It's gonna be exciting. I hope the quality's good. Here we go. And now. Okay, it's recording. It is officially recording. Let's take the camera, put it inside here. I'm gonna put it in facing inside. Let's go like that. All right, well, <laughs> let's fire her up. First up, separator. Okay. Um, just double check here. Okay, our rotor's at 440 RPM, fan's at 630. All right, ready for this? Here goes, feeder house. I heard something. Oh yeah, it definitely went somewhere. Well, that was that was pretty epic guys thank you for uh recommending that we uh run a run a gopro through this combine that was pretty cool but i just can't believe that that sd card was sitting there all by itself just waiting to be picked up by me i i was not expecting to be there i was gonna look on the ground i thought for sure there was no way i was gonna find that thing i found just about every piece for that camera and then there was that sd card so here's the thing though guys i went back to my computer and i plugged that sd card into my computer and there was two video files on there. One worked, one was what I recorded before I put the camera through the combine. The second one corrupted, didn't work. I couldn't play it. I even bought a $30 software repair software to try to repair that file to see if I could get it, didn't work. So I sent the video off to my amazing editors at Modi and those guys said, we'll see what we can do. And lo and behold, they got a fix that fixed it and got it working. But the thing is, it only shows a minute of recording under the feeder chain in the feeder house here. And then it just stops. So here's what our conclusion is, guys. When I engaged the feeder house and it kicked the camera inside, it was only about a half a second to a second that that camera slid up the feeder house and hit the rock beater and went into the rotor. So my guess is when that camera it got detonated, exploded, when it hit, hit that rotor rafts bar or whatever it was that destroyed it, the camera didn't have time to finish processing the last few seconds of video, so it didn't even save it to the SD card because it was gone. Usually these cameras, when you turn them off or stop recording, it takes a couple seconds for it to finish saving that video data to the SD card. Well, it didn't. So, no video. I have a little bit of it sitting in there, but that's it. But this combine took one of these, just like that, and turned it into that right there. So I'm sending this to GoPro, and I'm gonna see if they'll honor their uh, $100 off count and see if they'll give me a GoPro 8 for 100 bucks cheaper. So we'll see. But guys, again, it was awesome. And uh, thanks for watching. I know this was probably a non-typical video to come from here, but you know what, whatever, it was fun. And uh, on a side note, next video coming Saturday, we hauling some grain. We got the grain sold that's on the ground in those piles and leg arms took off on a nice little adventure. So I'd like to say I fired him permanently, but we're just gonna call it temporary firing. And then we'll just see how much we really need him because I have a feeling we're gonna really want him back immediately. But you guys will see him soon, don't worry. He's got some stuff up his sleeve he's gonna be doing. But Pops and myself, as well as a couple others, we're gonna get that grain off the ground and get hauled in. So stay tuned for that one. But again, guys, thanks for watching the GoPro detonation through the combine episode. And uh, stay tuned for the next one. 
God bless. Love you guys. And uh, it's going to be a great fall and year and everything coming. It's going to be a blast. We're going to have a lot of fun. So, see you later.